in the lands of blacks in the time of magic our fathers left some mysteries in the sands of time once upon a time in the days of old a group of people in Ilefe felt the need for them to go and create their own town and they told everyone in Ilefe then what they want them to know about their journey and hide their other plan that must not be revealed yet. The day to set out on the journey came and they left Ilefe. They left Ilefe with Adeide, the bronze crown, one of the most valuable possessions of Odudua's child. Odudua is the progenitor of Yorubas. You want to say how was it possible for them to steal such a thing? This is because their group leader himself is a descendant of Odudua. Suddenly, those left at Lefe notice that the bronze crown is missing. The bronze crown is something they can't do without in Lefe. So if these people are going to need a crown for their king in their new settlement, it shouldn't be our crown in Lefe. This was the thought of the king, so he ordered for a hot chase and retrieval of the crown. If they don't retrieve the crown, they must not come back. And you know, whatever the king says is the final. So they ran and ran amidst the thick forest, day and night. Those they were chasing also knew that they must not stop. Those that couldn't continue were caught up with and consequently leading to their death. So the chase continued day and night. After some times of running about in the bush, they came about a range of eels. These eels were so magnificent that they exclaimed, Idonri, meaning this is magical. So they decided to settle there and fight back. This town is argued to have been called Idori because most of the settlers were magicians. After a while of expecting these Ife people to show up so they could combat them, they didn't show up so everybody thought that was the end of their troubles and went on with their normal activities. Those that would build huts were building huts. Hunters were hunting and farmers were on their farms. But something happened. What happened was that the crown they had been keeping is missing. Ha! What can far? Quickly they summoned all their Ibu men and tasked them to find it. Agbogun was one of the men and he spotted this warrior from Ife escaping with the crown. There was a magic wand in his pocket. He brought it out and struck the ground with it. Suddenly, this thief was stuck to the ground and Agbogun beheaded him at the spot to retrieve the crown. This same spot is where the Idori king goes to fit his crown on his head every year. This same Agbogun left three wonders on Idori Hill, which existed today. One day, he called his fellow hunters to a particular place on the hill and he stamped his feet on the rock. This left his footprints on the rock. If you visit the place today, you will still find his footprints. And whoever you are, no matter your foot size, your feet will fit in this print. The only people whose feet doesn't fit into this print are considered to be rich. Agbogun then went to one side of this rock and left an inscription. An inscription that no one has ever been able to read. There is also a river at Idonri. Once upon a time, a hunter and his son went on a hunting expedition and his son discovered the goddess of prosperity chilling beside the river. He quickly called the attention of his father and his father tried to kill the goddess but failed and have himself killed. The goddess then decided to have mercy on the little boy and gave him a magical stick that helped him find his way home. 
This river has natural healing power, like the pool of Bethsaida. If you visit Idori today, you will be instructed not to talk in certain places for some strange reasons. If you also pay attention, you can hear some people under the hill. These are people who are believed to have run into the hill for safety during Yoruba wars and they keep living there ever since, unaware of civilizations of this time. Shout out to Sharon, that's the first person to comment on my last video.